The great and foundational doctrines of the Christian faith are being attacked on every side. They're being attacked from every side, and not just from those outside of the evangelical community, but those who claim to be part of the evangelical community. Now I want us to look at verse 36. It says, while they were telling these things, he himself stood in their midst. Now the Greek is very, very careful here, putting the emphasis it was Christ himself. Now what is the importance of this? It is simply telling us that this one who appeared is not another Christ. This is not another body. This is the very same Jesus who died and this is the very same body that suffered the nails and the lamps. But now it is resurrected. Now, I want you to look at Christ's great concern. Verse 39, see my hands and my feet that it is I myself, touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and blood as you see that I have. Now look at this. It is amazing, amazing the extent to which Christ goes to prove his resurrection. He appeared in their midst, verse 36. He showed them his hands and feet, verse 39. He commanded them to examine him with their touch, verse 39. And he performed an activity that is almost always relegated to the physical realm. He ate in front of them. Now, why is he doing this? Why, how, he's guided by what motive? I believe there are three motives. And don't think this is elementary or just simple. These are being attacked. He's wanting to prove that he really rose from the dead. Number one, that it was a real, historical, physical resurrection. You say, but we don't have liberals around us much anymore who are denying these things. If that is true, don't worry, they will be back. And they are back, they're just clothing themselves in evangelical garb. That his resurrected body was the same body that had died. Now, what does all this teach us? First of all, the resurrection is a foundational truth of Christianity. This entire event proves to us the essential nature of the resurrection. Therefore, any pastor... Any prophet, any scribe, any theologian, any so-called prophet who wavers on the resurrection of Jesus Christ has absolutely nothing to say to the church. It doesn't matter whether they call themselves liberal or neo-orthodox, evangelical or from a so-called emerging something. It doesn't matter. We do, need, we do not need to learn from them. We do not need to understand them. We do not need to draw them into fellowship. They are not Christian. Now, another thing. It's the foundational truth of the gospel, the resurrection. If you read like Luke's second book and look at the apostolic proclamation of the gospel, what you'll find is the resurrection is the primary theme. Listen to me, pastor, preacher, missionary. The resurrection is not just something you tag on to the end of a really good sermon about the cross. And I would submit to you that if we would begin to proclaim with greater emphasis the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we would begin to experience a greater resurrection power in our preaching and in our congregations. So the resurrection is quite important. Also, the resurrection is the source of the missionary strength. Missionary work is difficult. It is self-effacing. It is sometimes humiliating. You can go for your entire life as a missionary and not see much fruit. And then there's your own weakness and sin. And I want to assure you as one who has been there, sometimes the only thing that will ever keep you going is that He has risen. He has risen indeed. He has risen indeed. Your sins are gone. He has risen indeed. The world has a savior. He has risen indeed. The universe has a king. He has risen. And one day, with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, you will too. And I can't wait to see your beauty on that day. <laughs>